this is a great way to start this new dev blog. We've got mind test built in here. We've got textures. We've got Atom. We've got a web browser. We've got mind test. Dude, this is, this just screams of everything being perfect. Let's place this unconfigured vending machine and let's throw an item description. Let's just say at least one person in your party should really buy one of these. Trust us. And uh, it's going to be that. And we'll call this important object. Save ending machine. Boom. We have multi-line text automatically wraps to space. How does this work? Trust me, I don't know. Here's the code for it. Text area 4.3, which is the um, horizontal space and then zero vertical space. And then the space the box takes up four spaces wide too high. And then the text to fill it with, it, which is the description text. You saw in the last video, I tried doing that from looking at this here. And for whatever reason, it refused to work. I still honestly don't quite know why this is working. Unless this is all the label. If I'm reading this code right, this is all the label. So the text area, X, Y, width and height, name. I don't have a name filled in. The name would be what name the field gets returned as when the button is pressed. Well, there isn't one. The description is the label. And then what default fills in is the last one. So that's how this works. So this is actually just a label for a text area. Very interesting. Now, how did I figure this out? Good question. How did I? Well, I did what any good hacker does. And I looked at something somebody else did who knew what they were doing. So if you look at the source code for mind test, uh, depending on what type of installation you have, find where mind test is actually installed, or you can just go out to GitHub and look up mind test project, go to the built in folder and client, uh, not client main menu. This is all of the code that makes up this window here. So I knew that under the client tab, there were server descriptions. So I tried using the information from that. So that was under tab client. There's a tab multiplayer. Yep, this is what it is under. And right here, game data server description or this. This confused me. The core form suck escape. That's if you're using strings that it'll interpret as a piece of code and try to interpret it that way instead of just as text. I'm not going to have any of that, so I didn't have to worry about it. But I still could not figure out what these parentheses and this true. I was like, what in the world? That doesn't make sense. So I tried it, and it didn't work. And I was like, OK. Someplace else, there's got to be text. And I thought, well, there is. Under the uh, texture packs. Texture packs give you a, if I had any texture packs installed, they potentially give you mod information. The uh, mods do the same thing. I just happened to look at the texture pack one before I got to the mod, mod one. And we have blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Uh, index, uh, blah, blah, no screenshot. Info text. This is the one. Text area. So I just pretty much copied a text area and then filled in my own information and got it to work. So that's all it took. Pretty sweet, huh? So now, now is the part of the show where we open up GIMP and show off our mad graphic skills. I'm totally kidding. I do not have mad graphic skills. Hmm, that's the uh, front of a configured machine. We want to duplicate 
not duplicate, double the image size. We are going to do canvas size. And I'm just going to change that to 32 by 32. Boom. And um, yeah, then let's go to my textures here. I've been using like the the textures rail and the spawn floor, which are both pretty much the same noise patterns for a lot of stuff. So, you know, I think I'm going to go ahead and create something entirely new for my noise pattern. So we'll just go over here to filters and I have a render clouds and let's do solid noise and um do I need more detail? Do I need larger sizes? Okay, that makes for really noisy noise. That's more about what I want, but maybe it needs more detail yet. What I want to have is something that's pretty smooth. Uh, we do want it tileable. Uh, let's try a new seed. And we'll just... Until I find something I like. That, that looks good. Alright. So we kind of have this cloudy texture. That's going to be my background. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer on top of that. And then I will go and change my brush to be one pixel. So I can draw one pixel. And this is the front. So what do I want to have on the front of this? Well, there's going to be a little coin slot here where you put your tokens in. And that'll be surrounded by a gray box, a light gray like that. Let's draw that on here. That might be too far over to the side. It's the beauty of doing layers in GIMP so I can just move this at will. Unfortunately, anything else that's drawn on this layer will move with it. Something you have to keep in mind. Should a coin slot be up there? Should be on this side? I don't know. We'll put it there. Then we need our little box where we grab our item from. So we'll do two pixels in from the corner. And if you use the shift key in GIMP, you can draw a straight line. And we will go ahead and draw a line coming up. Do that, and I will select a slightly less black color here and do this to kind of create some shading to a certain degree and I'll lighten that up a little bit more all right so that's kind of like my little dispensing thing on the bottom there then I'm gonna draw a box and this is gonna be where the screen is so the screen I don't know what color should be used for the screen I'm going to just use this purple color, because why not? Whoops. Okay, so that's two pixels, and that's two pixels. And we're going to make this thing, I don't know how wide. That wide. It doesn't really matter as long as the width stays the same. You know what I mean? And I went off. Because this should be there, and that there. So I'll just have to grab the eraser. Uh, we want to make sure we're using hard edge. It makes a jump to the pixels. And that should be it. There we go. So that's kind of our, our screen. This looks like there's way too much space on it and not enough going on. Well, let's fill that monitor in with a slightly different color purple. This is looking horrible. So it's like complete and utter garbage. Why did you guys let me do this? This looks like junk. Um, is there anything else this would possibly need? No, not really. It needs a screen on the front to tell you what you're buying. It needs... Oh, maybe I should have put the... Yeah, let's try that. 
I'm going to go ahead, use the eyedropper here, and I forget. It's like O and no. Yeah. N gives you the pencil, O gives you the eyedropper tool. So I'm gonna use O, select that, N to go back to the pencil. And we will draw that, and then we'll grab the eraser, which I guess is Shift E. And erase that out. So now we have a slot, which you know what? I th think I want that to be a little wider. So we'll just do this. There we go. We have the slot to enter the coins. Or tokens, whatever they are. Um, you know, a lot of times vending machines will have a... Like an eject button. Say you changed your mind on what you were going to purchase. So let's go ahead and make one of those. We'll use a darker red color. No, that makes it look like it's supposed to be a health pack. And the Red Cross doesn't like it when you use... Oh, that's like junk. Again, I am not the person to be teaching you how to make graphics. I feel like this vending slot should have something. Um, maybe... Uh, maybe something... Something going up here or something. I don't know. This background, I don't like the color of it. So I'm going to go ahead and go into levels. And we're going to... Nope. Pull the blacks over. We want to make it darker. Pull this over, that makes the whites brighter though, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't want to do that. Whoa. Midpoint, I can't pick with the color selected. Hmm. Yeah, see that looks like junk. This whole thing looks like junk. Maybe it's the fault of this big purple screen. Well, 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 let's... A blue screen? With a purple border on it? Looks even worse. I'm imagining like a vending machine kind of thing with a dispenser on it. I just can't make that appear here. I don't know... I don't know what it would need. Maybe, maybe let's get rid of this and fill this whole bottom up with black to about there. Then go up to there. And you go every second pixel. Now, hopefully, this ends up fitting out right. And I don't end up with one that's three pixels wide. Beautiful. Not really, but it kind of works. I could do take a slightly less black shade here and do a diagonal to kind of create depth to it. And actually as I go back in it should get darker. So I'm going to tone that down a bit more here. And do a little something going up that side. And that one should be even darker yet. Let's try that. That might work. 
I don't think the purple works though. And that return button just no. No, no, no. That needs to be something different. Um let's think like old school CRT computer screen. Do a black border. And let's go with a dark green. We'll fill it with a dark green. And then let's get a lighter green, but not too much lighter. And pencil that across on alternating lines. Almost will make it look like uh, from Fallout. There we go. Old computer monitor kind of look to it a little bit, sort of. Uh, and we could actually take a white, completely white, and drop the opacity down really far. And put a highlight on there. And for good measure. There we go. Now it kind of has that rounded-ish look to it a little bit. This whole little dispensing thing at the bottom, I'm still not too keen on. And I feel like this should have some coloration to it, but I don't know what color. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new layer. It's transparency. And we're going to just go ahead and fill that. And then we are going to scroll through these till we find a good mix. Multiply, burn, overlay, soft light, hard light, difference. Subtract, grain extract, grain merge, divide, hue, saturation, color. The value just went solid gray. Burn looks horrible. Darken only. Addition. Dodge. Screen. Lighten only. Dissolve. Normal. I think my best bet is probably going with either dodge or overlay. Overlay I think works. And then we can go ahead and go to colors and do a color balance. And I can tweak around these values. Except they're not changing anything. Let me try using instead of color balance um, hue saturation is that what I want? There we go. I can just go through the whole spectrum and see all my colors. I have no idea what color would look good for a vending machine in a spaceship. Maybe like a very pale yellow? I don't know. Let's see. Reds, orange. Okay, we're kind of to yellow there. Let's crank the lightness up. Turn the saturation down. That works. It has a very weathered look to it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save that. Export over auto store front. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. In game. Not the greatest. Just gonna say that right here and right now. Not the greatest. But, yeah, you know what? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So, now we will turn off the layer and we just have this block. And we're going to go ahead and export this as auto store side. Replace, please. Yep, export. And we also want to export as auto store top. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go ahead and see what we get. So now our auto store has this kind of blood texture going on all the way around. I guess, yeah. Now, we need to check this out. Um, bending one, right? 
Okay, this is our turned off vending machine. Turned off vending machine should not have that as a texture, however. The turned off vending machine should just have a screen that's black. Because after all, that's all it is, is turned off. All right, I was hoping that would work. The trick will be painting the dot in here. Where was it? There? That doesn't look right. It's three spaces and only two spaces. And this goes blurry, too blurry to tell. It was right in line. Okay, well. Easy enough to change, I think. Right there, huh? All right, so here is the off version then. So we'll just go ahead and export as auto store off, export replace. Mm -hmm. And. Ta da! Oh, now. Man, this just gave me. See, unfortunately, unfortunately, anybody can right click on this and pull this up. It doesn't care about anything, which in the previous video, I said it didn't matter because they would all be configured. But now that I'm looking at this turned off one, it might be cool to have some vending machines that are turned off too. Of course, if I'm going to have a turned off vending machine, it may as well just be a note with this texture that doesn't even say anything. So I can just make that as a whole new node without any issues. All right, so let's go ahead. Selling, no wait, we are selling one of those for this. And we will just say this item should not be sold for any reason at any time. And we will do like ultimate hack machine. Ultimate hack machine. They're selling a machine. Which for some reason says cobblestone on both. That's weird, but whatever. We'll give him this cobblestone, get an unconfigured vending machine. And now why is this the ultimate hack machine? Because it's basically an item duplicator. Say you wanted, say this was gold. Just, just bear with me here. So we're selling gold for one cobblestone or dirt. We're gonna do 99 and then we save this. Now, gold pretty much has lost all value, because I put in 12 pieces of cobble, and I get 12 stacks of gold. And you see why I mean this is a ultimate hack machine? Oh. Oh, wait, yeah, this was the ultimate hack machine. <laughs> there we go. That's why you don't want to leave these unconfigured and let people get their grubby paws on them. Unless, of course, you have it set up with uh, a permission, which the original mod does. So, you obviously could do that. I think just for kicks and giggles, we are going to go ahead and create another version that's just a powered off. That'll just be a node. So, we're going to go ahead and copy this. We're going to call it vending underscore dud because it doesn't do anything. No, it's broken. No power to it. Or maybe it just doesn't have any items. Whatever the reason is. Wait, do I end that with an end? 
I don't think so, because I didn't have a function. So it should just end out like that. If we did everything right, this will run. If I didn't, mm, I'll get an error. That's what I love about it. No compiling. Give me spawn vending dud. And let's take five dud vending machines. Oh, it has the on power. Or the on texture, rather. That's not good. We want it to be turned off. Quick, easy change, though. Um, someplace here. Should be a front, and it should be called off. Maybe? Yep. Alright. And... Ta-da! They're all turned off, but they're not configurable at all, so they'll never turn on. They're just there to pretty much take up space and break up the break up the monotony of things. I still don't really care for this bottom portion here. But I do like the screens and the the money slot, so it's a start. I'm gonna go ahead and change all of the names from auto store to vending. And I'll probably actually do spawn underscore vending. Top, side, front, off, whatever. Um, but I'll do that all off camera because nobody wants to watch that. And that wraps this episode of the dev blog up. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Anything you want me to cover about making sub games, let me know in the comments. I'll try. Code is on GitHub. Feel free to clone, fork, do whatever you want. It's all there for you to explore, to learn. And if you want to play it, go for it. You can't really do anything right now because most of it's not done. But it's there. If you ever want to throw it up on a server, go for it. Pretty please let me know because I want to see it on a server. I'm going to put it on my own server at some point. But got to get that YouTube money first because YouTube is going to pay for the server. Well, my YouTube earnings. Well, anyway, that's the end. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.